You may be seated. Thank you. It's my privilege today to be in the house of the Lord and to greet all the ladies, not just the mothers, but all the ladies. It says in Proverbs 31 and 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You know, it's it's, it's wonderful when we fear God and in his presence. In Proverbs 31 and 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household, and she eateth not the bread of idleness. This is all ladies. This isn't just mothers, but this is all ladies. We, uh, as ladies, we, uh, we look for, uh, take care of our house. Amen? amen. Ladies, Amen. Amen. We clean our house, or we get someone to do it. We pay him to do it. Praise God. And <laughs> eat if not the bread of idleness. And I thought how, uh, how, how a lady surely doesn't sit around and be idle, because I don't know how they have time for that. Because uh, seemingly I never have time for that. But idleness can get you in trouble, ladies. So we don't want that spirit. We think of 1 Kings 17 and 13 says, Elijah said, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me a little cake first and bring it to me after. You make one for me, and then you make for you, and then your son. And she did according to the saying of Elijah, she and her house did eat many days. And I thought how true this lady was obedient to the man of God. And that's something that us ladies need to practice. We need to be obedient to the man of God over us. And I'm so thankful that we have that leadership here at South Flint Tabernacle. We have a good pastor. We have a good bishop. <clears throat> and I love them both. And I hope you do too. And the uh, well, last thing I wanted to say was about this uh, Josiah's mother, now Jedia, or something like that was her name. It's kind of like everybody said, Jerusha, Jerusalem, what's her name? <laughs> and I thought about that. I thought, well, that is a hard name to pronounce. But uh, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And uh, can you imagine your eight-year-old reigning over a kingdom? But you know what? He had a good mama. She evidently really helped him. She trained him. At eight years old, she was telling him probably how to rule the world <laughs> and Jerusalem. So, uh, you know, ladies, we have a job. We have children. We have a big job. And God wants us to do our very best. And I'm introducing a great lady. Her name is Jerusha. McGee, and this is the pastor's wife here at this church, and uh, my father was a, a good man, but he could never say her name, ever, till the day he died. He couldn't say Jerusha. He called her something else, and her father-in-law couldn't pronounce her name either, but I'm so glad that you've got that name good and down today. It's Jerusha, and I love this girl. She's my uh, second daughter. I have one that's uh, married to John Hudson. And uh, Melissa's a very good mother. And we love Melissa today, and I give her honor as well. She's with her mother-in-law in Arizona today. But I'm thankful that um, I have two good daughters, and both of them are serving God and serving the kingdom of God. And so I want Sister McGee to come up here, and I want her to deliver what God has given to her. She has worked hard on this, and I know God's going to bless her. She's fasted. She's prayed about it. So uh, we just want God to use my daughter, Jerusha. Thank you. Sister McGee. Thank you. 
You may be seated. And um, she is correct. A lot of people could not pronounce my name. My, um, I learned how to spell it very young so that when they asked in the grocery store, I made sure I told them exactly how to spell my name. And my father-in-law tried and tried and couldn't. Um, so I was named for quite a while Dorito. I ate Doritos, and he would say, dur 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 Dorito, come here. And I knew he was talking to me. So um, I am thankful that I have been given a blessed name. If you didn't know, my mom really couldn't pronounce it either when I was born. It was my dad who named me. <laughs> but before they left the hospital, she got it, so I'm glad. But anyways... It is my privilege today to share thoughts with you on this special day. I want to give honor to my mother, who has taught me so many valuable lessons, such as um, no matter what happens in, li in life, as long as you have Jesus and chocolate, it'll bring you through. It'll take you through. It'll take you through. <laughs> she has taught me when you don't know what to say, just say, whatever. It encompasses everything. My mother is such a worker and has led by example in working, cleaning the house, and doing laundry, no matter the time of day or in the middle of the night. She does it at all times. She has shown me how to lead with grace and determination. And mother, you are a great example of a godly mother who gives selflessly to others. And I am blessed to have you, and I love you, mother. So I honor you today. I also want to give honor online to my mother-in-law. I thank you for raising an incredible son. You have instilled in him how important it is to love the Lord and to love people, to have compassion on those who are less fortunate and never give up on those that are lost. And that has contributed greatly to the wonderful pastor that he is today. We love you, Mom McGee. So I honor her today. I also want to tell my children while I'm here, Jade and Jason, that they mean the world to me over there and the other ones working for the Lord. But I love you both, and I thank you for making me a mother. Um, I also give honor to my bishop and my pastor who allowed me this great opportunity today and to the ministers and the members of this church. I honor you for being a wonderful people who love I can say from the bottom of my heart, this is the best church and the best people because you love. You know how to love, and that truly makes you a wonderful people. Now, if you all join me in standing, I'm going to read some scriptures that will lead us into our thought today. And they gave me four bottles of water, so just so you know, I have a while. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. But we're going to start in Psalm 17. 5 through 8, and it says, Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thy ear unto me, and hear my, hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee. From those who rise up against me, keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Psalms 37, 36 and 7 says, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. I am thankful we don't put our trust in men. We don't put our trust in government. We don't put our trust in money, but we put our trust in the almighty God, Jesus Christ. It is him who we can trust with our life. It is him we can trust with our beings. And I thank him for that. You may be seated. My title for the thought that I share with you today is Under His Wings. Under His Wings. Today, as we have celebrated Mother's Day, and I want to say all of you that had a part in the service, you did a great job. Sister Amanda, I'm proud of you. You did a great job. But we have often heard phrases like, uh, she's a mama bear. 
or she's a tigress. Or pastor likes to say mama meerkat, which I don't know because I think they just scurry around the desert with nothing really important to do. But um, anyways, in truth, there are many different types of parenting. And according to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, here is the list. We're going to go through some. And whether you're a parent or you were raised by a parent, which is everyone here, you should have a thought in your mind about this. The first one is the elephant parent. Now, this does not refer to size. It refers to the parent who is very nurturing and protective, the elephant parent. The tiger parent, the parent that doles out tough love, is strict and demanding. <laughs> we got amen. <laughs> Giving yourself away. Now, uh, the helicopter parent is next. Uh, not only does this parent hover, but will swoop down and sweep up any troubles that his or, tr uh, his or her child might get into. Uh, next, uh, Merriam-Webster says the lawnmower parent. This is uh, the parent uh, that's based on the notion that the parent mows a clear path of well-groomed uh, paths to success that is free of obstacles. The next one is the snowplow parent. This parent is often more aggressive than the lawnmower parent in clearing the way, but nonetheless clears the way. Then uh, number six is a bulldozer parent, which is often conceived as the machine that removes everything, good or bad, in the way, the intimidator. The next is the dolphin parent. <clears throat> this parent is authoritative in nature, like the body of a dolphin, it's firm but yet flexible. And then the last one they mention is the jellyfish parent. <laughs> These parents have few rules and expectations and give in to avoid confrontation. They lack authority and are generally over permissive. Now this is a list, I didn't make this up, this is real, you can check it out yourself. But now as I read this, some of you are already placing yourself in a category, right? Come on, you are. You were thinking, oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Um, I would never be that parent. Maybe one of, some of you thought that. And in truth, you're probably just that parent. So I would say it would be fun to ask your children, whether they're in the home or they're grown, what kind of parent would you say that I am? <laughs> you might be surprised. But no matter what category you fall in, you did or you do what you do to protect your child and help them be the best you feel they can be. You want to be everything that your child needs. In likeness in the scripture we read at the start, we see that God wants to be everything we need. The scripture shows us that no matter what we go through and what we deal with, God is there to help us under his wings. He offers protection, comfort, shelter, and strengths under his wings. In Psalm 17, and I'll just read it, this portion again. He says, he keeps me as the apple of his eye. Hide me. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. When we are hidden under the shadow of his wings, we are protected. We are not left vulnerable or out in the open, but we are protected in a safe place. Now, we're talking about wings, so I thought I would show some pictures here of some birds covering their young. Well, this is wings. This is a snow owl with their wings. Beautiful, isn't it? But we have some mothers covering their young with their wings. And um, I love that one. That's adorable. But uh, all those babies under the wings. Bird feathers, and you can keep showing them, but bird feathers are known to be a fantastic form of insulation against the cold. That is why many people love down pillows or down comforters. They are just comfy, right? How many like down? down? Okay, don't go to sleep, but <clears throat> they're just comfy, right? So people like to be in it. Um, some feathers are coated with oil, which also creates a waterproofing effect from rain, rain or snow. These pictures show in the natural of the mother birds wrapping her wings around the young. But I want you to think for a moment in the spiritual. How God wraps his arms around us. How many of you has God wrapped his arms around? 
How many have went through something and you didn't think you could make it on your own? But then you felt God's wings come in and just wrap you up. He says, you're not alone. I've got you covered. You are under my wings. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalms 91, and I shared some of this with the ladies at prayer, but it's been such a burden in me that God wants us to know that we are under his wings. But in Psalms 91, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you dwell on something, it says there has to be a pause in motion. To dwell, you have to stop. You have to only think on one thing. It has to be a pause in your daily mindset. So when you dwell on the secret place of the Most High, you're saying, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, that's when you dwell on. When you dwell on the secret place, you say, I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. You're dwelling. You're dwelling. You're dwelling. And then when you dwell, you abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I will say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Who do you put your trust in? What is a refuge? I'm so glad you asked because I wanted to share. It's a condition of being safe or sheltered. Sheltered from pursuit or danger or trouble. So I tell you, when you're alone at home or riding in your car and you're feeling overwhelmed, when you feel that you just can't take what life is dishing out, if you're dealing with some loss or some emotion or anxiety, I want you to remember that God said he is our refuge and our strength. Yeah. Psalms 46 says God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is rivers whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Where the Most High dwells. And the next part, listen to this next verse. God is with her. She will not fall. God is with you. You will not fall. God will help you at the break of day. God will help you. Hallelujah. Quit putting your trust in things of this world. Trust and believe that God wants to take care of you. If you will come to God with your issue, if you will come to God, if you will humble yourself, he will meet you there. You will not be alone. Psalms 91 and 2, which we read, refers to a refuge and a fortress. A fortress is a person or thing that is not susceptible to outside influences or disturbances. Think about that. Not, you can't be disturbed. Because the Lord is your refuge and your fortress. See, when God surrounds you, there is no disturbance that can put you off course. There is nothing that can influence your walk with God when you are truly surrounded by him. He is your fortress. So when we sing that song, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, somebody knows what it's like to be surrounded. You've been facing some things. We say it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. He goes on to say, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. I fight them under his wings, surrounded by the Lord under his wings. Under his wings. Surely, verse 3 says, surely, 
He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. Just remember, when the enemy comes at you in your thoughts and your things and he tells you you're not worth it, you're no good, you're a failure, you'll never be. Isaiah 59, 19 says, when the enemy comes in like the flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. He shall. And verse 4 says, he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. When God covers you with his wings, nothing can take it away. I want you to understand the covering. Show the picture of the, look at this. This bird is covering. There's no, there's no way to get inside that. That bird is covering. It's sheltering under his wings. So, verse 5 says, Thou shalt not be afraid for terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Some of you just need to stop standing by yourself. You need to get under his wings. You are not alone. You don't have to battle it alone. You are not. Quit trying to handle everything on your own. Quit trying to figure it out. God wants you under his wings. I want to read verse 4 again under the, in the English Standard Version. He says, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. So in different versions, we hear different things, but I thought... What are pinions? How many? I mean, we read the, you know, King James, and we thought, okay, they're feathers, right? But what are pinions? Pinions are the outer part of the bird's wings, including their flight feathers. Okay, listen here. Birds are unable to take flight while covering something with their wings. It is impossible. So when dark, turbulent times come, and they hit close to home in our lives, we lose a loved one or a job. Someone is diagnosed with the illness. Your child turns away from God. Your marriage is in trouble. Simply your dreams are shattered or your aspirations are le left unmet. I want you to remember that the Lord covers you with his pinions, which means he doesn't fly away. He doesn't leave during threatening times. He never forsakes us. We remain secure under his wings. He never leaves you because he's covering you. There's no flight when he's covering you. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8, in the English Standard Version, it says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. We are protected under his wings. Psalm 61 and 4, the American Standard Version says, I will dwell, there's dwell again. I will think about the Lord. I will dwell on the Lord. I will dwell in the tabernacle forever. I will take refuge in the covert of his wings, of thy wings. And what is the covert? The innermost part of the wings. The innermost part of the wings. You cannot be on the edge. Well, Lord, I, I, I want you to... His wings are here, and you're here. Lord, I, I do want you to. I want you to help me with this, but I'm going to handle it until I can't handle it anymore. Right? Or we handle it until we make a mess. Right? But God says, no. I want you to take refuge in the deep part. In the deep part, I want you to take refuge. I don't want you on the outer part of my wings, but I want you to come in so that I can engulf you, so that I can cover you, so that I can protect you under my wings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come in deeper. Come in deeper. When we do this, we are protected like a bird from the elements and from the enemy who would hunt us down. We are not left vulnerable in the open, but we are protected under his wings. The Bible does not promise us that there will be no trials or heartache in life, but it does assure us that God is with us. 
and he will cover us under his wings. Now, you may say, well, Lady McGee, I don't have a wayward child. In fact, I don't have no children at all. I have no illness. I have none of these problems that you mentioned before. And I would say, well, then you are blessed. Maybe you should be here instead of me. But thank God for that. But another thing that being under his wings allow is rest. And everyone needs rest. We often fail to take a break from the busyness that leads to burnout, that depletes our soul of joy. Right? I should at least get an amen from the moms. All right. Our weary bodies and hearts, our what ifs, our anxious thoughts, they all contribute to a breaking point. But Psalm 63, 7 says, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. To rest is an intentional position of the heart. Just like the sound, and you hear it sometimes before you want to hear it, the sound of the morning birds chirping in the morning sun, right? Our joy is found in the sun, but not S-U-N, but S-O-N. The end result in resting and under his wings is joy. You can have joy. And I, Brother Bob was going to help me, but he had to go out. But I was going to say, weeping may endure for a night, but but joy comes in the morning. How do you get that rest? By coming under his wings. Amen. Now, what does rest do? It allows us to renew, to make something fresh. When you rest, it makes it fresh. How many, if you had a good night's sleep, you wake up, you feel refreshed usually, right? If you don't have a good night's sleep, watch out, right? But when you've rested and you feel refreshed, it makes you strong again. See, Jesus Christ restores us and makes us strong after each renewing under his wings. After that, we're ready to take flight and soar again. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Are you thankful that after resting under his wings that you can go again? Are you thankful that after resting you have energy? That you have strength to pursue what God has given you? We all need a time of rest. And if you are here today and you have felt that you need his wings to cover you, I pray that you will respond to God's prompting. And I say, if you have never known about Jesus or how to get under his wings, let me share a story with you. Many sources tell the same story, and many of you have probably heard about it in different forms or different ways. But several years ago, after a large fire, a forest ranger began to assess the damage that was done. One bird, one ranger found a bird literally petrified in the ashes, perched and stacked twists on the ground at the base of a tree. Somewhat sickened by the eerie sight, the ranger poked at it with a stick. He then heard some noises and poked at it some more until he flipped over the charred body. And when he did, out scurried three offsprings from under their dead mother's wings. The loving mother, keenly aware of the impending disaster, had carried her offsprings to the base of the tree and gathered them under her wings. When the blaze arrived and the heat scorched her small body, the mother had remained steadfast because she was willing to die so that those under her wings could live. I'm so thankful that many years ago on a hill far away, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was crucified on a tree. When the pain came, when the stripes came, he stayed the course. When the mocking came, when the, when the pain came, when they nailed huge nails in his hands and in his feet, 
when they pierced his side, he stayed on the tree. He died so that we could have eternal life. What was he doing? He was covering us with his wings. What was he doing? He was saying, here I am. You don't have to bear that alone. You don't have to do that alone. I am covering you with my wings. That shame, that guilt, you don't have to carry it. I'm covering you with my wings. <laughs> cover you. Let him cover you with his wings. Let him cover you with his wings. If the musicians will come. If you're here today and have never been baptized in the name of Jesus, I simply ask you, why not? Why not? If you want the Holy Ghost, it can be yours today. In the Bible, we are given clear instruction. As mothers, we love instructions. So let me tell you about where those instructions are found and what to do. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why the name? Because he went to the cross. He's the one that can cover you with his knee, wings, Jesus Christ. He says, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He wants to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. And moms, you know how much your children mean to you? Well, if you follow this, he says, the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's for you today. It's for your children Today, God is calling you, come under his wings. No matter what you're going through, God is saying, I'm here. My wings are open. Come under my wings. So as I close out today, and if you can all stand, I just want to read Psalms 91 again from the Amplified. Jesus, under your wings we are being. But Psalms 91 says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust with great confidence and on who I rely. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings, you will find refuge. He is, his faithfulness is a shield and a wall. So I tell you today, come under his wings.